The Journey of Gap. Unless you're a sewing whiz, whipping up your own threads, chances are you've hit the gap at least once in your life, probably more. This fashion hub has been on the scene for over 50 years, dishing out affordable, laid-back styles for the whole crew, even the little tykes. Shout out to Gap Kids and Baby Gap. Starting out as a denim haven in a college town, rocking the Levi's vibe, it's now a global sensation with stores all over the map. Sure, it might not be as crazy popular as back in the day when everyone was rocking khakis and button downs. But hold up, don't write it off just yet. The Gap's got some tricks up its sleeve, and word is, it's aiming to be your go-to shopping spot once again. Watch this video to learn more. Origin on Gap. Let's travel back in time to 1969, a year marked by the moon landing and the Beatles' Abbey Road. In the bustling city of San Francisco, a real estate agent named Donald Fisher, aged 40, embarked on a mission driven by personal frustration. Donald Fisher, like many others of his era, struggled to find Levi's jeans that fit just right. Instead of endlessly scouring the stores in search of that elusive fit, he decided to take matters into his own hands. And so the seeds of Gap Inc. were sown. With his wife Doris by his side, Fisher opened the very first store of what would become the iconic Gap chain. Nestled on Ocean Avenue in San Francisco, this store initially bore the name The Gap, a nod to Doris Fisher, and an acknowledgement of the generation gap between the founders. Here, they set out to offer a unique shopping experience, marrying Levi's jeans with a selection of vinyl records. However, the vinyl records didn't quite strike a chord with customers. So, in a surprising move, the Fishers decided to phase out records from their store. But here's the twist. Gap didn't start with its own products. Instead, it initially based its strategy on Levi's, with whom Donald Fisher had a close connection. Levi's played a pivotal role in Jap's early days. They made a pact. Levi's would ensure that the Gap was consistently stocked with their apparel, which would be delivered overnight from their San Jose, California warehouse. In return, Fisher committed to offering Levi's apparel in every conceivable style and size. As a bonus, Levi's director of advertising sweetened the deal by offering to cover half of the Gap's radio advertising costs up front. In exchange, they'd provide a marketing package to any store exclusively selling Levi's products. The Rise of Gap? The opening of the first store was a resounding success. Despite Levi's being the hottest brand in the country at the time, Gap faced no shortage of eager customers. They swiftly opened their second store in San Jose in 1970, expanding to include Levi's apparel for women. By the end of the year, Gap had sprouted another half dozen stores, each contributing to the formation of a distinctive brand identity. Their advertising spoke the language of the young and rebellious, capturing the essence of the era. As Gap's third anniversary approached, the company had blossomed from a single store to a chain of 25. Eager to diversify, the founders launched a second retail venture, Pants Percent F, specializing in discounted jeans. This bold move paid off handsomely, with 36 locations established in just four years, raking in a staggering 14.7 million in sales, equivalent to over 85 million today. And so Gap began its journey into creating its own brand and products, laying the foundation for the global fashion icon we know today, Gap's early journey. In 1974, something exciting was happening at Gap. They began selling their very own in-house designed apparel. This marked a pivotal moment that set the stage for Gap's journey to go public. In a move that reverberated through the business world, the Gap Stores, Inc. decided to take the plunge and offer shares to the public. This offering included a staggering 1.2 million shares of stock, each priced at 18. Gap didn't stop at creating its own products, it also expanded its store offerings. In 1977, two new players joined the Gap family. First, there was Brands, a value-priced chain targeting a more mature clientele. Then there was Logo, aimed squarely at the fashion-conscious consumer. But the story of Gap's expansion doesn't end there. In 1978, a captivating new chapter began with the acquisition of Banana Republic Travel and Safari Clothing Company. 
Founded by Mel and Patricia Ziegler, the company originally specialized in safari-themed items. These founders, who were known for their own adventures in travel, brought a unique flair to the clothing world. With hand-drawn catalogs of their items and safari-themed stores, they spun tales of fictional travelers and explorers, adding a touch of mystique to their brand. Gap saw great potential in this concept and acquired the company in 1983, giving it the name we know today, Banana Republic. The stores also underwent a transformation to create a more upscale appearance. The 1980s were a whirlwind of excitement for Gap. Not only did the company venture into mergers and acquisitions, but it also made its debut on the silver screen. Michael J. Fox, the star of Back to the Future, famously sported Gap jeans in the film, catapulting the brand into pop culture. Furthermore, in 1989, Gap introduced its now iconic blue logo with white lettering, a symbol that would grace its stores for nearly three decades. The early 90s saw Gap reach new heights. In 1991, Gap made the bold decision to bid farewell to Levi's products in its stores. This era was marked by significant achievements, including Gap's woven shirts and white denim jeans gracing the cover of Vogue magazine's 100th anniversary issue. The stock price soared to a record high of 59. Old Navy's triumph. In 1994, Gap welcomed a new member to its brand family, Old Navy. Inspired by the prototype store of Gap Warehouse, Old Navy burst onto the scene in Colma, California. The name, a nod to a Parisian bar, hinted at the brand's lively and adventurous spirit. The brand's instant success was nothing short of phenomenal. Within just four years, it generated a staggering $1 billion in annual sales, solidifying its place in GIP's portfolio. The changing of the guard. The 90s also brought significant changes to Gap's leadership under Miller Drexler. The brand underwent a transformation towards an upscale identity, revamping its inventory to meet the evolving tastes of consumers. However, Drexler's 29-month sales slump, overexpansion, and tension with the Fisher family led to his dismissal in 2002. Despite this, Drexler's legacy remained, as the merchandise he ordered before departing sparked a remarkable rebound in sales a month later. Navigating through the 21st century, in the early 2000s, Gap grappled with market shifts and overseas challenges, ultimately losing its leading position. In the years that followed, Gap witnessed a shift in strategy and embarked on a series of expansions and contractions. Between 2011 and 2013, the company closed 189 U.S. stores, which is 21% of all U.S. locations, while expanding its presence in China. In 2013, the brand set its sights on Brazil, opening its first store there. And in October 2018, Gap Inc. introduced Hill City, a brand of athletic apparel for men. The year 2020 brought unprecedented challenges due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Gap Inc. was forced to close more than 225 locations, far surpassing its original plan of shuttering only 90 stores. Yet, the company remains undeterred, projecting that its online business will double over the next two years. In response, Gap Inc. announced a significant $140 million investment for a distribution center in Texas set to be completed in 2022. This state-of-the-art facility will process a whopping 1 million packages daily. Thanks for watching.